January 10th will be a blast. For the first time ever, Blue Origin's big new Glenn rocket will soar into the sky even before Starship Flight 7. Some enthusiasts are calling it a pivotal moment in the emerging space race between these two companies, but in reality, New Glenn is not a competitor. Instead, it's just trying to do what SpaceX did 17 years ago. This flight, in essence, signifies a quest for self-surpassing and marks a new chapter in Blue Origin's ambitious journey of space exploration. So how will Blue Origin's New Glenn make history in its maiden voyage? What implications does this have for the future of space travel? Join us as we dive into the details and uncover everything you need to know in today's episode. On January 6th, Blue Origins CEO Dave Lim released breaking news about the progress of New Glenn's rocket. Blue Ring Pathfinder integrated, Jacqueline well underway, launch license received, here we go. This signals that Blue Origin's New Glenn is indeed ready for its maiden voyage from Launch Complex 36. The company also officially validated New Glenn's launch date, with the launch window opening at 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on January 10th, 2025, and lasting for three hours. The January 10th launch date is within the time frame of the FAA's launch permit, which is valid from January 6th to January 12th. It initially served as a backup opportunity with January 8th as a potential launch date, according to the FAA's Operations Plan Advisory. The latest announcement comes a month and a half after the rocket went vertical on the launch pad and 10 days after New Glenn's hot fire test. Compared to Starship's complex preparation, New Glenn's pre-launch preparations are pretty simple. Following the vertical positioning of the rocket last November, New Glenn was prepared for the multi-day test campaign leading up to the hot fire, including numerous inert functional and tanking tests. Soon after the static fire, the FAA granted the launch license for the firm. By then, Blue Origin CEO Dave Limp commented, Well, all we have left to do is made our encapsulated payload and then launch. In addition, Blue Origin's recovery vessel, Jacqueline, has departed Port Canaveral early this month for the inaugural launch of New Glenn. Honestly, the anticipation surrounding Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket is palpable, electrifying the space community as it prepares for its long-awaited maiden flight. The maiden flight is particularly captivating because it represents the first real test of new Glenn's capabilities. Will it soar gracefully into the cosmos or face unexpected challenges? Furthermore, the flight, initially planned for October 2024, carrying NASA's Escapade Mars payload, was postponed as New Glenn was not anticipated to be ready for its debut by then. The Escapade mission has now been rescheduled, and the outcome of this flight will influence Blue Origin's launch frequency with New Glenn in 2025. The company stated that its key objective is to reach orbit safely. They also admit that landing the booster on their first try on a barge in the Atlantic is ambitious, but they are going for it. The concern is not unfathomable. Take a look at SpaceX. Its early attempts at landing the Falcon 9 booster on a drone ship saw several explosive failures before achieving success. However, given the differences between the two scenarios, we'll simply have to wait and see how things unfold. Do you think New Glenn will nail a successful booster landing on its first trial? Don't hesitate to drop your thoughts in the comment section below. This is our first flight, and we've prepared rigorously for it, said Jared Jones, senior vice president of New Glenn. But no amount of ground testing or mission simulations are a replacement for flying this rocket. It's time to fly. No matter what happens, we'll learn, refine, and apply that knowledge to our next launch. Like any rocket launch, the Blue Origin rocket has typical mission milestones like liftoff and stage separation. Powered by 7B for engines, generating approximately 1.5 million pounds of thrust, New Glenn will ascend vertically from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Florida. Following liftoff, New Glenn will follow a vertical trajectory before gradually tilting to achieve a more horizontal flight path. This phase is crucial for reaching the optimal speed and altitude for stage separation. After burning through its first stage fuel, New Glenn will separate from its first stage a few minutes into flight. The 57-meter-tall first stage Glenn Stage 1, 
known as so you're telling me there's a chance or gs1 sn01 will then initiate its descent for a planned propulsive landing on the recovery vessel Jacqueline, positioned downrange in the Atlantic Ocean. The GS-1 stage, equipped with 7B for engines using methane and liquid oxygen as propellants, will use all seven engines during launch and up to three engines during landing. The stage will also use fins and thrusters to guide its path to Jacqueline, which will be out in the Atlantic hundreds of kilometers off the Florida coast. The 23-meter tall Glen Stage 2 GS2 will ignite shortly after separation, continuing to propel the payload into orbit. GS2, powered by 2B3U engines that use liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen as propellants, is not reusable. However, Blue Origin previously explored a concept called Jarvis, aimed at achieving full reusability for both stages of the vehicle. Once the second stage reaches the designated altitude and velocity, it will deploy the primary payload, the Blue Ring Pathfinder, as developed by Blue Origin's in-space systems business unit. The Pathfinder will test Blue Origin's core flight ground systems and operational capabilities as part of the Defense Innovation Unit's DIU Orbital Logistics Prototype Effort. The DIU funding is helping to enable future Department of Defense missions, this deployment is expected to occur approximately six hours into the mission, allowing for extensive testing of systems and technologies. The performance of New Glenn in completing these tasks will significantly influence its future path. First of all, this inaugural mission is part of the National Security Space Launch Program, which could position New Glenn as a competitive player in government contracts and national security missions. Last June, the U.S. Department of Defense picked Blue, Origin, SpaceX, and ULA to compete for the Pentagon's lucrative National Security Space Launch Phase 3 procurement program. This marks a significant milestone for Blue Origin, propelling Jeff Bezos's rocket launch and human spaceflight company into the competitive arena it has long aspired to join. On the other hand, there will be challenges ahead. Moreover, SpaceX and ULA, two titans in the launch industry, have been the Pentagon's primary rocket launch providers since 2020 under a predecessor program called Phase 2. That program awarded ULA 60% of all Pentagon missions through 2027, with SpaceX receiving the rest. Therefore, in this third phase, Blue Origin will need to make significant efforts to stand out against its two rivals. The successful completion of this mission will validate Blue Origin's technology and operational capabilities, not only for the Pentagon, but also for future missions and broader commercial viability. For instance, the new Glenn rocket is expected to help deliver payloads to the company's planned space station, Orbital Reef. Jeff Bezos's rocket company aims to turn this space station into a destination for astronauts when the International Space Station is no longer in use. New Glenn coming online soon will also facilitate the launch of the Blue Moon Lunar Lander, a precursor to a future crewed lunar lander it is developing for NASA. This lander aims to support NASA's Artemis program and further exploration of the moon. Apparently, you can't prove your ability to reach another planet if you haven't even made it to orbit yet. At this point, it's worth mentioning significant commercial launch contracts, including a multi-launch agreement with AST Space Mobile. This partnership is designed to deliver multiple next-generation Block 2 Bluebird satellites to low Earth orbit, enhancing AST Space Mobile's capability to provide cellular broadband service globally. Through these missions, Blue Origin strengthens its position in the competitive space launch industry, particularly against established rivals like SpaceX. The company's mascot, a tortoise, pays homage to the tortoise and the hare fable, Emphasizing the mantra of slow and steady wins the race, we believe slow is smooth and smooth is fast, Bezos said in 2016. These comments were seen as an attempt to position Blue Origin as the anti-SpaceX, which is known for embracing speed and trial and error over slow, meticulous development processes. However, so far, there is a significant difference between the two companies. SpaceX has cemented its position as dominant in the space industry, while Blue Origin is better known for suborbital space tourism.
That gap could widen in the coming years, especially with speculations about potential advantages SpaceX might gain under a second Trump administration. Elon Musk's influence, coupled with roles like Jared Aikman's nomination as NASA's new administrator, raises questions about the competitive landscape for national contracts. Nevertheless, Bezos stated he is not worried that Musk's influence will adversely affect Blue Origin. I take at face value what has been said, which is that he is not going to use his political power to advantage his own companies or to disadvantage his competitors, Bezos commented. I could be wrong about that, but I think it could be true. With New Glenn's maiden launch on track, Bezos remains confident about Blue Origin's future. He noted that the company has a significant runway as he can continue to finance it through sales of Amazon.com shares. Blue Origin is going to do some amazing things here. It's not a very good business yet, he acknowledged while expressing high aspirations. From a financial returns perspective, Bezos believes Blue Origin could eventually surpass Amazon, which held a market capitalization of approximately $2.3 trillion as of December 4th. Perhaps his optimism is well-founded, given New Glenn's progress in recent years. This is partly thanks to Bezos' decision to appoint Dave Limp as the new CEO of Blue Origin on December 4th, 2023. Limp, a former Amazon executive, led the company's consumer devices unit and oversaw the development of products like Alexa, Kindle, and the Kuiper Project Amazon's satellite internet initiative. His experience in consumer electronics could be valuable in developing commercial applications for Blue Origin space technologies. Limp's focus on urgency, decisiveness, and customer centricity might help Blue Origin become a leading player in space exploration and commercialization. New Glenn's upcoming maiden voyage represents a bold step into the future of space exploration. With meticulous preparation, innovative technology, and high stakes in both commercial and government sectors, this launch could redefine Blue Origin's trajectory. All eyes will be on the skies as the countdown to January 10th begins.